Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. I have read this scripture and continue to be impressed of how clearly the Old Testament prophet describes the conditions today. Almost daily we read of those who invest for little return. We eat food so refined that the nourishment is lacking. We witness the drink that can never satisfy the thirst of those who drink. The dressing for style rather than warmth, comfort, and modesty. The high wages of the wage earner today that still do not satisfy their needs. A noted historian several years ago summarized the reasons for the fall of Rome as follows. The breakdown of the family and the rapid increase of divorce the spiraling rise of taxes and extravagant spending, the mounting craze for pleasure and the brutalization of sports, the decay of re religion into myriads of confused forms, leaving people without a uniform drive, our unconquered appetites consuming drives for material possessions, appears to be leading us on a course so often repeated in history. Greed, lust, and desire, historically, have only led mankind to waste, destruction, and suffering. James E. Talmage has written, Material belongings relative wealth or poverty, physical environment, the things on which we are prone to set our hearts and anchor our aspirations, the things with which we sweat and strive, oft times at the sacrifice of happiness and the forfeiture of real success, these, after all, are but externals, the worth of which in reckoning shall be counted in the use we make of them. Isn't this the time, and isn't this the hour, to follow the admonition of the Lord? Consider your ways. I've spent considerable time since the last general conference examining my ways to determine what I must do to measure up to the call the prophet has issued to me. Let me share one or two of those lessons this new experience has given to me. For 21 years before receiving this call, I was employed by some of the great department stores of this country. I have been blessed with some close associations with some of the most talented leaders this in industry has produced. I find myself today making comparisons with my former business associates and those with whom I am now busily engaged. Both groups had great leaders, but oh, how different was their motivation. I have found in these brethren seated before you the fulfillment in their lives of the promise given to the prophet Joseph Smith. Let virtue garnish thy thoughts unceasingly. Then shall thy confidence wax strong in the presence of God, and the doctrine of the priesthood shall distill upon thy soul as the dews from heaven, and the Holy Ghost 
shall be thy constant companion. I have watched them armed with the Holy Ghost as a constant companion, taking on an enormous workload at an age when most men would be confined to rocking chairs and engaging in strenuous travel schedules with great enthusiasm to be anxiously engaged in building the kingdom of God. Then by observation, the realization has come to me that this great spirit that blesses them in their activities is not a special gift to them alone, but is available to all mankind if they will but be partakers and earnestly seek it and be humbly guided by it. The office of the Holy Ghost is to enlighten the mind, to purify and sanctify the soul, to incite to good works, and to reveal the things of God. Isn't this spirit a constant companion you need in your life? Consider your ways. Isn't now the time to follow the Lord's direction and receive the divine assurance that he is with you, guiding you into the paths that will make your life meaningful, rewarding, and satisfying? Now, secondly, I was reared in a home with noble parents who gave their children the security of love. We as a family were tied together by those great bonds. During our married life, with the exception of an occasional visit, we have lived at least a thousand miles away from our family center. What a great enjoyment it is to be near them again. Our last high school basketball tournament gave our family a rallying point for a common activity. My brother's boy participated on one of the teams. They had lost their first game. His personal production for that game was 12 points. That was about average for what he had been doing during the season. Then tragedy struck the team in the second game. Their big center, who was their high scorer, was injured and out for the balance of the tournament. The team realized that another loss meant elimination. My nephew was placed under the pressure of having to make up for that loss. He was moved from his regular position of forward to replace the center. He met the challenge by scoring 32 points that game. Then in their final two games, he led the team to victory and ended up second in the state in scoring. His scoring was almost twice what he had normally been producing. Bearing his testimony the following week in meeting, he remarked that when the pressures became great and the burden difficult to bear, he would hear the encouraging cries of his family above the roar of the crowd and would be inspired to try harder. The courage of this young man taught us all a lesson that day. One of the gifts of a loving family is encouragement and confidence to magnify ourselves. Is your family one of strength, help, and support one for another? Or do you waste and depreciate one of the greatest gifts of our eternal Father with jealousy, bickering, and the lack of interest one for another? Do you fail to communicate the love you have for each other, and thus depriving your life of some of its choicest moments? One of our prophets has said, I have but one thought in my heart for the young folks of the world, and that is that they be happy. I know of no other place other than home where this happiness can be found. It is possible to make home a bit of heaven. Indeed, I picture heaven as a continuation of an ideal home. 
Consider your ways. Isn't this the time to let the sweet influence of the Lord come into your home? We have just purchased a home since moving west that has one unique feature. A small study provided has an adjoining large closet that's about one-fourth the size of the entire study. We thought when we were considering the purchase of this home that this closet was an error in design. Since occupying the home, it has become one of my favorite places, for it is here that I can shut myself off from the world and communicate with my Father in heaven. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray unto thy Father, which is in secret, and thy Father, which is in, and thy Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Consider your ways. Couldn't your life stand some open rewarding by the Father? Isn't this time to learn how to communicate with our Father, which art in heaven? I leave you my witness that I know that God lives. I know that his Son is directing the affairs of this church today through his chosen prophet. I sustain and support him. Consider your ways. If that witness has not been given to you, isn't now the time to seek it? Come and join with us, and let's continue to build the kingdom of God here and now. I humbly pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.